Okay, today we're going to uh, start talking about amplifier models. So we talked about um, what amplifiers do in general and a little bit about how they behave. And now what we are going to do is we are going to have equivalent circuit models for amplifiers. So even if you don't know uh, what's actually inside an amplifier, you can substitute for this amplifier with an equivalent circuit model which uses all the same uh, components of, um, that you learned in EE211 circuit analysis and then you can solve um, for how the circuit behaves that way. So for example, if I were to tell you that you have an amplifier uh, with an input resistance of 5 mega ohms and output resistance resistance of 1 kilo ohm and a voltage gain of 100. Um, I don't actually know how this amplifier is created. I don't know what's inside this amplifier um, that allows it to meet these specifications. But if I only want to know, given a, a 5 kilo ohm load, how much voltage uh, gets delivered to that load, for a given input voltage. I don't need to know what's inside that amplifier. I just need to have enough information that I can create an equivalent circuit model for my amplifier. And with this information, uh, we do have enough information. Okay, so let's look at one uh, type of amplifier model. And so that's the voltage amplifier model. Okay, so this uh, circuit that you see here is going to substitute for your amplifier in your circuit schematic. And if you do that, then you can use all of your EE211 circuit analysis uh, methods to figure out what's going on in the circuit. Now, what do we have inside our equivalent circuit? Well, these are the input terminals. So I'm going to have some input voltage across those. And you can see across the two input terminals, I have a resistor, Ri. So that's the input resistance. That's the resistance uh, of your amplifier that your input signal is going to see. Then I have a dependent voltage source here, and the uh, dependent voltage source is just going to be A V naught, which is my gain, my open circuit gain factor, multiplied by V I, my input voltage, or my voltage across my input resistance. Okay, so this uh, dependent voltage source represents the open circuit gain of my amplifier. Open circuit gain meaning the gain when I have no load connected to the output of my amplifier. Okay, and here's my output. So I'm going to generate some voltage across my output. And if I have a load here, um, the load is going to see some resistance looking into the output of the amplifier and that's what R0 is. That is the output resistance of my amplifier. Okay, so using this equivalent circuit I can figure out what the voltage at the output would be assuming that I don't connect any, any load resistance 
up to the output. I just leave it as an open circuit. And so if this uh, output side is an open circuit, then I have no current going through R0. So there's no voltage dropped across R0. So my output voltage is just the same as the voltage across my dependent voltage source. Okay, so my output voltage equals to the voltage across the dependent voltage source, which is AV0 times VI. And this, from this equation, we can get the open circuit voltage gain again. So that's AV0, and this is a voltage gain, so it's always the output voltage divided by the input voltage. But it's an open circuit voltage gain because I didn't put uh, any anything across the output of the amplifier. Everyone okay with this this model so far? Okay, so it's not very interesting right now because I don't have a load here. So if I don't connect my amplifier to a load, it's not doing anything. So let's add in a source. Okay, so here's my, this is still my amplifier input at this port. And this is still my amplifier output at this port. But now I've connected up a load resistor RL and a source, a voltage source. And the voltage source can have uh, some internal resistance to it. That's what RS is, the source resistance. Okay, now when I, I connect up a source and a load um, to my voltage amplifier equivalent circuit, um, I cannot write that the output voltage is just equal to the voltage across the dependent source. Because now I'm going to have some current uh, flowing through my load resistance. So I'm going to have some current through my output resistance or not. So there's some voltage drop here. So my output voltage is not equal to AV0 times VI for this voltage. Okay, and that's because I have a, a load resistance there now. Okay, so what is going to be my output voltage then? So let's just analyze, focusing on this part of the circuit. I want to know the voltage across RL. Again, this is not a this is not a three twenty three problem. It's a voltage divider. So what's the equation going to be? Uh, let's just do the resistances first. So R L divided by R L plus R naught. So the resistance I'm interested in divided by the total resistance, multiplied by the source uh, voltage, which is A V naught times V I. And this is my, this is a voltage divider equation. Okay, so this is going to be my new equation for what the output voltage is going to be if I have a load connected up to my amplifier. And so I can write then what the voltage gain will be. That's just AV, not AV not, because I'm not looking at an open circuit voltage gain. I just want to see what the voltage gain is. So that's V not divided by the input voltage. 
And so, just divide both sides by pi. So it's just going my my overall voltage gain is just going to be my open circuit voltage gain A V naught multiplied by R L over R L plus R naught. Okay, so my voltage gain with the load there is going to be less than um, what the voltage gain was when it was open circuited when I didn't have a load there. But what if I want uh, AV to be equal to, to V0? Looking at this equation, this last equation that I wrote, how do we get that? RL, if RL becomes 0, yeah, if RL becomes 0, this term becomes 1. And so AV is equal to AV0. So... So if R naught goes to zero, then from this equation, AV is equal to AV naught. Okay, so this is the ideal value. Of the output resistance if you are trying to make a voltage amplifier. You want to make your output resistance as low as possible so that all of the voltage at your output gets transferred uh, to the load. Which makes sense, again, if we just look back at this at back at the schematic. So our output voltage is dependent upon the voltage divider between R0 and RL. And you always get the most voltage in a voltage divider. The most voltage is going to drop across whatever resistance is greater, right? So if uh, R naught becomes as small as possible, then you're going to get the biggest voltage possible across RL. Okay. Um, any questions on this part? Okay, so let's look at the input side now. Okay, so now we're gonna, right now we're gonna focus on this side of the amplifier. Okay, and this voltage VI is the voltage going into the input port of my amplifier, but it's not the same as VS, which is the voltage of my voltage source because my voltage source has some uh, internal resistance to it, RS. Okay, so how do I represent VI in terms of RS? I'm oh, sorry, VS. So again, yeah, this is a voltage divider. Okay, so VI is equal to, what's the equation? Okay, so I have a voltage divider at the input now that's setting the value of VI. Okay, and ideally, we want all of the voltage from our source to get delivered to the input of the amplifier. Even if I have some finite source resistance, uh, what does this represent, for example? Uh, this, this is an example of your, your function generator in the lab. The internal resistance of your function generator is set to be 50 ohms. So even if you have some internal resistance, maybe this is 50 ohms, I want to get whatever voltage that this is generating uh, delivered um, to my input. Okay, so I want I want VI to be equal to VS. So 
even if I have a, a 50 ohm uh, internal resistance to my voltage source. So how do I achieve that? How, what do I do to RI in order to make VI equal to VS? Look at this equation. So let's look at two extremes, okay? I can make Ri equal to zero. If Ri is zero, uh, what is Vi going to be? Zero. Okay, so let's look at the other extreme. Let's make Ri infinity. If Ri is infinity, what is uh, Vi going to be? It'll be Vs. Okay, so this is going to be my ideal value for the input resistance of a voltage amplifier. I want an infinite input resistance because then it means whatever voltage I have produced from my source, all of it's going to get delivered to the input of my amplifier, no matter what the value of RS is. And again, that makes sense by looking at the schematic because if RI is equal to infinity, that means the input current is zero. So that means if there's no current through RS, there's no voltage dropped across it. So that means VI would have to be equal to VS. OK, but let's say we don't have an infinite uh, RI. We don't have an infinite, oh, yes, question. Okay, so remember, this is just the model of what's inside the amplifier. It's just an equivalent circuit. It's not actually what's inside the amplifier. So, so yes, if you wanted to, if this was the circuit inside your amplifier, you would just take out that resistor, Ri. But we're modeling what's inside of an, an amplifier. So it's, it's hard to make an, an infinite input resistance in a row amplifier. So we will leave this in there because there's going to be some finite uh, input resistance for most amplifiers. Okay, so again, assuming that um, Ri uh, has some finite value and R0 has some finite value, we can figure out uh, what the overall voltage gain is of the amplifier. Okay, so this was uh, the equation in the numerator, this is the equation for the output voltage. Uh, the uh, denominator is the equation um, um, for the uh, input voltage, and you get the overall gain, overall voltage gain for this amplifier. And again, we see that if Ri becomes infinity and, and R0 goes to zero, um, then, then AV is just equal to AV0. OK, so this is one way to represent what's going on inside of our amplifier with a relatively uh, simple circuit that we already know how to analyze. Um, but you may not be concerned with voltage amplification all the time. So we can also look at uh, different kinds of models. So for example, uh, we were looking at, at, at these circuits before. Uh, this was the, the block diagram for the radio, where we take the radio waves uh, from the air, we run them through a voltage amplifier, then uh, run them through a current amplifier, and then go to the speaker. 
So right now we already know a model for the voltage amplifier. So what if we took the radio waves, uh, just ran them through our voltage amplifier, uh, and then had them go uh, directly to the speaker? Okay, so that's what uh, that's what this system is showing you. So we have uh, some voltage amplifier and our speaker. Okay, so this is what our our schematic of our our block diagram is going to look like. Okay, so let's add uh, some values to this. Okay, so uh, we'll set RS to be eight ohm. Set sorry, seventy-two ohms, and I'll set the impedance of the speaker to be eight ohms. Okay, so the output is going to be a voltage divider again and so that's 8 ohms over 8 ohms plus 72 ohms So that means only 10% of the voltage from this source is getting delivered um, to the speaker. Okay, so even if we do some voltage amplification and we have a relatively large voltage at the output of our voltage amplifier, only 10% is getting delivered to our speaker. And so this is not going to be um, the ideal case. So what we can do to help with this circuit is we can add another amplifier uh, into our circuit between the voltage amplifier and the speaker. Okay, and that is something called a buffer amplifier. So the buffer amplifier, uh, all we want for a buffer amplifier is that it has a very high input resistance and a very low output resistance. We don't care if it has gain or not. It can, the gain can be, um, you know, approximately one. But all we care, we, we mostly care about uh, the input and output resistance. So if we do that, and this is, uh, this is representing the buffer amplifier, the input resistance here is large, much larger than 72 ohms from the source resistance. So that means all of my voltage from this source goes into the input of my buffer amplifier. And the output resistance of this amplifier is really small. So that means all of the voltage produced from this buffer amplifier gets delivered to my load. Okay, so even without uh, adding any gain from this amplifier, I can more efficiently transfer voltage from my source uh, to the speaker using this buffer. Okay, but um, another thing that we're concerned about for speakers is not necessarily the voltage that we're delivering to the speakers, but the current that we're delivering, because we talked about that before. The speaker is uh, an electromagnet um, that you run current through and it'll, and it'll oscillate to produce the sound. So we need a lot of current there. Okay, so you might not be too concerned with voltage amplification, but instead you want to know uh, by what factor do you amplify the current. Okay, so there is a related model, which is called the current amplifier model. So again, this is just going to be an equivalent circuit to replace the amplifier. But now, if you care about finding out what the current gain is going to be, not the voltage gain, but the current gain, then this might be the model that you choose to replace your amplifier with. Okay, it looks pretty similar to the voltage amplifier model, except this is you would do like a source transformation at the output side of the equivalent circuit. And that allows you to get a dependent current source here. And this current source value is going to depend upon the value of the input current uh, entering into the input port.
of the amplifier. Okay, now if we want to define a current gain, uh, I can't do it if I don't have any load connected because uh, I want to look at output current, the current coming out of the output port of my amplifier. But if, there's, if this is open, then there's no current coming out of my amplifier. So the way that we define current gain is something called the short circuit current gain. So what would the output current be if I had a short circuit across the output of this amplifier divided by whatever the input current is? Okay, so that is, um, this gain factor is A sub IS. Now for the current amplifier, what's the ideal value of my input resistance going to be? So for the voltage amplifier, I was concerned with getting as much uh, voltage as possible at my input. So I could transfer all the voltage from my source uh, into the input of my amplifier. But now I'm, I, I care about input current. Okay, so I want to get my, my input current as high as possible because that means that uh, the output current, which is going to be equal to this, is going to be as, as large as possible. So what's the ideal value of Ri? Yeah, this is going to be zero because this allows me to maximize the value of the input current. Okay, how about uh, so? R0 now is, is now in parallel to the output port. So what's the maximum value of R0 in order to get as much current as possible delivered to my load? Infinity. Because current is always going to take the path of least resistance. And now in my, in my output side of the circuit, I have a current divider, right? The current could go through R0, or it could go through this path, which represents delivering current to the load. So if I make R0 as large as possible, then most of my current at the output is going to go through my load. Okay, so this will maximize the output current. And that will give me my, my highest gain factor. So the best performance of the current amplifier. OK, so we looked at uh, voltage at the output when I had an input voltage. That was the voltage amplifier model. Now we looked at output current. If I have a certain input current, that was this, that's this current amplifier model. And we can switch those up, too. So another way to, to model a, an amplifier is to model it as a trans-resistance amplifier. Now for the trans-resistance amplifier, what I care about is the voltage at the output divided by the input current. Okay, so I'm trying to, I have some current coming into my amplifier, and now I care about the voltage that I'm producing at the output. And it's called a uh, trans resistance because uh, the units of gain are going to be uh, volts divided by amps, which is resistance. So in this case, we want to look at open circuit trans resistance because we're looking at voltage at the output. And so this is going to be um, the, the open circuit trans resistance of this type of amplifier, the open circuit output voltage divided by the input current. Um, 
if you have uh, some load and I need, let's say, I need to generate, uh, I don't know, some voltage, some output voltage greater than, say, 5 volts or something like that. And my input is going to be some current source. Then I care about what my input current is, and I care about what my output voltage is. So maybe my output voltage is greater than 5 volts, and then, and this is actually a varying load because I can connect this up to, to many things. Then I only care about what the, the output voltage is, um, and I care about what the input current is. So it just depends on what parameters are important at the input and the output. Okay, so um, for this case, we care about input current. So what's the, the ideal value of Ri? So same as the input of the current amplifier when we cared about input current. So the ideal value is zero. And what's the ideal value of the output resistance? This looks the same as the output of a voltage amplifier. So this is also zero. Because that means I would transfer the maximum possible voltage uh, to whatever load I connect up. Okay, and the final amplifier model type is now I'm going to look at uh, output current, um, but an input voltage. Okay, so since I'm looking at output current, I need to look at it when I short circuit the output. So this is going to be something called transconductance, because now I'm doing uh, current divided by voltage, so it has units of 1 over resistance which is conductance. Okay, so um, the short circuit transconductance is whatever this output current is when I have a short circuit divided by the voltage at the input. Now for this type of amplifier, what's the ideal input resistance going to be? I care about uh, maximizing my input voltage. So, I want to maximize my input voltage. So that means what, what needs to happen to the input resistance? Not zero. So ideally, this should be infinite. And I want to maximize the output current. So R0 should be infinite. If you can't decide which amplifier model you want to use, or maybe you're not comfortable with uh, transconductance or transresistance, you can always switch between the amplifier models as well. Because if, if you notice what we're doing is we're just doing source transformations uh, at this output side. Okay, so according to the source transformations, we can relate all of these models um, to one another. So, for example, if I wanted to relate uh, my voltage amplifier model to my current amplifier model, so I'm trying to uh, convert um, the um, open circuit voltage gain to the short circuit current gain, so I can write the open circuit output voltage for the voltage amplifier 
I can write what the open circuit output voltage would be for the current amplifier and just set those two equal to one another and then I'll end up with this relationship between the two. And you can do a similar thing for relating the open circuit uh, voltage gain to the uh, uh, trans resistance and to the transconductance. So that's here and here. So you can always convert between the amplifier models if you find that it's easier to work with, with a particular type. Okay, so let's look at an application of these amplifier models next. And this has to do with picking a circuit that uses more than one amplifier in series. And so that kind of connection is called a cascaded amplifier. Um, you need to do this when you have an amplifier that doesn't meet the specification you want. Um, and so in order to meet maybe a performance requirement of your circuit, you may need to combine amplifiers um, to achieve that. Okay, so for example, let's take a look at um, these amplifiers. So I just have these amplifiers lying around. Uh, amplifier 2 has a, um, a moderate input resistance, it has a high output resistance, and it has a high gain. Amplifier 1 has a high input resistance, a high output resistance, and a low gain. And amplifier 3 has a low input resistance, a low output resistance, and no gain. Okay, so they all have slightly different um, specifications to them. So if I wanted to make, so my goal is going to be to make a voltage amplifier. And if I have a, a voltage amplifier, uh, I want a high voltage gain. And what else do I want for a voltage amplifier? What do I want for my input resistance? High or low? High. And my output resistance is low. Okay, so let's say I want to make a voltage amplifier with a high gain, high input resistance, and a low output resistance. None of these amplifiers by themselves have all of those qualities. But I can combine these in a way that the resulting circuit does have all of these qualities. So I'm just going to rearrange these in order. So I called them 1, 2, and 3. So if I take amplifier 1, it has a high input resistance. Okay, so my, my input signal is going into this amplifier. So my input sees a high input resistance. That means I meet that specification. Okay, it has a high output resistance, which is bad because that's not what I want. But this is not going to be, my output signal is not going to come directly from this amplifier. So I don't care. And it has a low gain. It doesn't have a high voltage gain. It has a low gain. But I don't care because this is not going to be the last amplifier that I use. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the output of amplifier number one and put it into amplifier number two. Amplifier number two had only a moderate input resistance, not a high input resistance, but I don't care because my input signal never sees, never directly sees amplifier two. Okay, it has a high output resistance, so I'm still not satisfying my output resistance requirement but it has a high gain. Okay, so this amplifier, amplifier 2, is going to give me the high gain that I want. And I still didn't meet the last specification, so then I'm going to take the output of amplifier 2 and put that into amplifier 3. Amplifier 3 has a low input resistance, which is exactly the opposite of what I want, but I, again, I don't care because 
my input signal never directly sees amplifier 3. And it has a low output resistance, okay, so I'll satisfy that condition if I now take my output signal out of here. It has no gain. So whatever signal I'm putting in at the input of the amplifier, I get the same signal strength at the output, but I don't care because I already had high gain through amplifier 2. So my overall amplifier, the, the combination of all of these amplifiers, will meet all of these specifications. It will have a high gain, it will have a high input resistance, and a low output resistance. Okay, so I just took all of these mediocre voltage amplifiers, these three different mediocre voltage amplifiers, because none of them were very good at any one at, at, at all these categories. And I, by combining them in this way, I just made a very good voltage amplifier because it all has, it has the properties that I would want for a mini voltage amplifier, which is a high voltage gain, uh, a high input resistance, and a low output resistance. And this is what you will, you may need to do uh, when you are designing uh, real world amplifiers. Because you're not going to have a, a magic amplifier. Okay. So let's look at a numerical example of this cascaded amplifier. Okay, so let's say that um, this is my circuit. So I have, and this is my source here. Okay, so all of this stuff in the dashed box is my power source or my signal source. It has some uh, voltage and has a, an internal resistance of 100 kilo ohms. And I want to use that uh, to drive a load of 100 ohms. So what's the first thing that's wrong here? Is my, is my output signal going to be my output voltage is going to be very large. Who says yes? Who says no? Uh, more of you should say no. Why, why are we saying no? Because my low resistance is so small compared to the internal resistance in the source. So if I do a voltage divider here, uh, the voltage across my load is going to be a lot smaller than whatever the voltage is um, being produced by this voltage source. Okay, so not only am I not getting amplification from this circuit, but I'm getting attenuation. So my signal at my load is very small. Okay, but I don't want that. I want to have a voltage at my load that's greater than or equal to 700 times the voltage uh, of this ideal voltage source. Okay, so that means I need an amplifier. And I have these three voltage amplifiers that you see here on the bottom. These are the equivalent circuit models for my voltage amplifiers. Now, uh, by themselves, if I just put in, say, this first amplifier and stick it into the circuit, it's not gonna, it's not gonna meet this specification that I have here. Same thing with the other ones. If I only put in one of these amplifiers into the circuit between the source and the load, I'm not going to meet uh, my specification here. Okay, so the only way I'm gonna meet this specification is if I do a cascaded amplifier. Okay, so this is what the circuit is going to look like that meets um, the specification. Now, it looks uh, kind of complicated, but we'll work through it step by step. And you'll see that it's just uh, iterating some of the equations here. It's not hard to analyze. Okay, so out here is um, our original source. So the, the ideal voltage source 
in series with the 100 kilo ohm source resistance. All the way on the right is my 100 ohm load. And I'm putting in those, those three voltage amplifiers that you had before. This time I'm choosing the order for you. And we'll call uh, a single one of the amplifiers a stage. Okay, so this is now a multi-stage amplifier circuit. Now we'll just label them from left to right. So stage one, stage two, and stage three. Okay, so now for this circuit, I want to know what the uh, overall voltage gain is. So in other words, what's the uh, voltage at the load divided by Vs? I want to know what the output current is divided by the input current. And I want to know what the power gain is going to be. So the power delivered to the load uh, divided by the input power to my amplifier. Okay, so we're going to go through uh, all of these calculations. Okay, so let's start by looking at, um, we'll just look at stage one for now. Okay, and the first thing that I want to do is I just want to know What's the voltage uh, to the input of this circuit, the input of stage one, which is VI1, uh, divided by the source voltage Vs? Or if you don't want to think about it that way, what, just what's VI1 in terms of Vs? So it's a voltage divided between this 1 mega ohm resistor and this 100 kilo ohm resistor. So 1 mega ohm is in the, um, by itself, in the numerator. And I'm dividing the left side by Vs. I don't have to put Vs uh, after my resistors. Okay, and if you do this calculation, then it comes out to about 0.9 and it's unitless because I'm dividing by volts but if you want you can put volts per volts that's fine too okay now let's find uh, the voltage gain of stage one. So that's going to be the voltage at the output of stage one, which is the same as the voltage at the input of stage two. So it's VI2. And I want to divide that by the voltage to the input of stage one. That's VI1. Okay, what is that going to be equal to? Okay, so in order to figure this out, I'm looking at that part of the circuit. So again, it's a voltage divider between this 100 kilo ohm resistor and this 1 kilo ohm resistor, or the output resistance of stage 1. And I need to multiply by the source voltage in this voltage divider circuit, which is 10 times VI1. But I'm moving VI1 to the left side. So I'm just going to put 10 here. And this is equal to 9.9. .9. Everyone okay with this equation?
Okay, so I know that the voltage is at the input of stage one. Um, I can relate that to Vs by the first equation. I can now relate the voltage at the input of stage two, or the output of stage one, same point in the circuit, to the voltage at the input of stage one through this second equation. So now let's figure out what the voltage is to the input of stage three, or the output of stage one. Sorry, stage two. So this is stage two. Okay, and we'll call that the, the voltage gain of stage 2. So that's going to be VI3 divided by VI2. And now we're looking at a voltage divider in this part of the circuit. Okay, so that's 10 kilo ohms over 10 kilo ohms plus 1 kilo ohm. And I need to multiply by the voltage of this source, which is 100 VI2, but I, I divided both sides by VI2, so VI2 comes over to the left side. So this is 90.9. Everyone okay with this? So you're going to do the same thing to find the output um, at the end of stage 3. Okay, so try and, and I'm going to end here. So try and go home and do that. And then from all of this, get a relationship between the voltage at the uh, load and the voltage at the source using all of this information here.